over the years we've had a lot of people tell us we don't know what we're talking about regarding cooling the engines down. Harley knows what they're doing. They test the bikes, you know, for thousands of miles in 110 degree heat in Arizona. And, you know, the Harley engineers and designers, you know, can't be wrong and how can we know better? Well, I'm pretty sure the Harley engineers do know that they're making a bike that's going to self-destruct if it runs how it runs from the factory. But they can't do anything about it. Welcome to the fifth in the series of videos on why and how to cool down your twin cam and M8 engines. We're getting really close to talking about how. We've been talking the last four videos about why. But before we can talk about how to cool them down, we have to know how much we want to cool them down. So what we're going to talk about today is what are our target temperatures and why do we have those target temperatures. So before we talk about what the target temperatures are on the twin cam and M8 engines, um, I'm going to let you know up front that they're different for the twin cam than the M8. And also, you notice that in this whole series we're not even talking about Sportsters because Sportsters are a whole different animal than the Twin Cam and the M8. So just for the Sportster people who might be watching this, let's talk about what the target temperatures are for a Sportster because sometimes Sportsters do need a little bit of help. So talking about uh, Sportsters, Sportsters have the heat sensor in the top of the rear cylinder compared to like twin cams have it in the back of the front cylinder. Well the top of the rear cylinder is much harder, hotter than the rear of the front cylinder that's more in the wind. So with the Sportster the target temperatures that you want to uh, see in the engine temperature readout as shown on a power vision coming from that sensor is anywhere between 320 and 375. So when that sensor on the top of the rear cylinder on the Sportsters range between 320 and 375, you're in good condition. Your oil should not be going over 230 degrees. In the most extreme circumstance, high speed, hot weather up a hill, maybe 240, 250. If you're seeing oil temperatures over that, you need help with your Sportster. If you're seeing that your ET, your engine temperature, from that sensor on the top of the rear cylinder is over 375, you're starting to get into dangerous territory. You want to do some things to cool it down. But the fact of the matter is most sporties without a whole lot of intervention run that way from the factory with the Evolution engine. It's the twin cam and the Milwaukee 8 that have the serious problems. So on the, let's talk about the twin cam first. Our target temperature for the twin cam is 230. We don't want to go above 230, and that's the ET readout, which is coming from the sensor that is located at the rear of the front cylinder. And so we want to see a temperature of 230 or lower. Ideally, we'd like to see 190, 200, 210, but the fact of the matter is that it's unrealistic. 230 is okay. In extreme circumstances, again, long, hot runs, going up a hill, heavy load, it might, you might see it get to 250, but your everyday riding, it should not go over 230. If it goes over 250, when it starts getting 260, 270, you're going to feel that engine get really sluggish and accelerated damage, accelerated wear and tear is occurring in that engine. And of course, you have a sluggish engine, and you also have 260, 270 degrees radiating out to you instead of 210, 220, 230. So our target temperature on a twin cam, as read by the PowerVision ET, is 230. Why do we use the PowerVision ET as the baseline? Because that's the same temperature that the computer, the Delphi computer, the ECM or the ECU, on on the bike uses to retard the timing, advance the timing, enrich in the fuel, lean out the fuel. So 230, 230 
is your ideal everyday riding temperature and we use the power vision ET readout because that's the same thing that Harley uses in the ECM is that readout from that sensor at the rear of the front cylinder on the twin cam. Now a little side note is that all things being equal if you run long enough your oil temperature is going to normalize at about the same as your engine temperature. So if you don't have a power vision where you can read an ET, you know, to see if the ET is, you know, 220, 230, 240, whatever, after you've ridden for an hour or so, look at what your oil temperature is. And if the oil temperature is 230, then that means it's normalized with the heat of the engine. Your engine temperature is probably around 230. That's on a twin cam. On the Milwaukee 8, the ideal temperature, again, for the oil is 230. Sportster 230, Twin Cam 230, M8 230. Okay, 230 is the ideal max temp for the oil. You don't really want to go over that. If you start going over 230, it's because the engine is getting too hot for its own good. You're going to start getting sluggish power and having accelerated wear. And, of course, the breakdown of the oil. But the M8 has its sensor at the rear of the rear cylinder. And because of the design of a Harley, the rear cylinder is always hotter than the front cylinder. The front cylinder is in the wind. The rear cylinder is blocked by the front cylinder. So on a Milwaukee 8, instead of having everyday riding temperature being ideal at 260, at 230 on a twin cam, on a Milwaukee 8, it's 260. Okay, and in extreme circumstances, again, running hot, running heavy, running up a hill fast, it might get up to 280, but when you get to 290, that ET readout on a Milwaukee 8, when it gets to 290, you're going to start feeling that sluggishness, and you're going to be having accelerated engine wear. So our target temperature for everyday riding is 260 on a Milwaukee 8, and 230 on a twin cam as read by the ET, which is the same thing that Harley is reading when they make adjustments to the timing and to the fuel mixture. On the oil, it's 230 across the board. You don't want to go over 230. Now, if you run 10 minutes down the road, you're not going to get up to 260 on your MA. We're talking after you've been riding 30, 45 minutes on a warm day it's going to get up to that temperature. So those are our targets and of course they start out much much hotter than that. That's the target temperature that we want to bring the temperatures down to. <clears throat> Over the years we've had a lot of people tell us we don't know what we're talking about regarding cooling the engines down. Harley knows what they're doing. They test the bikes you know for thousands of miles in 110 degree heat in Arizona and you know the Harley engineers and designers you know, can't be wrong and how can we know better? Well, I'm pretty sure the Harley engineers do know that they're making a bike that's going to self-destruct if it runs, how it runs from the factory, but they can't do anything about it. So they have to deliver the traditional look to get people to buy the bikes. They have to meet the EPA standards. So yeah, Harley engineers know that they're engineering a bike that runs too hot for its own good. They cannot do anything about it. So, the fact of the matter is, oil breaks down starting around 260, 270 degrees. And yeah, all those people who want to say that uh, oil is rated to 400, 500 degrees, yeah, the oil is, but not the viscosity modifiers. Just take that oil and run it up to 350 degrees for an hour, and you tell me that it's just as quiet running after that. No, you're going to hear ticking and clattering because the viscosity modifiers are not working. You got to cool the bikes down, not only for rider comfort, but also for the benefit of the bike. Now in the next video, which is going to be number six in the series, is the last video we we're doing, and we're going to talk about the nuts and bolts. Remember in the, a couple of videos ago I said we're going to do a whole video on how cooling down the engine increases performance? 
I'm going to give you the nuts and bolts of temperatures and why. Why? I told you what our target temperatures are, but in the next video is going to be why those are our target temperatures and documentation for, uh, from across the internal combustion engine world uh, on why these temperatures are ideal for performance. So that's coming up in the next video. If you found this video useful, if you liked it, found it interesting, please share it with your friends. Please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please do so. It helps us out a lot. And you all be safe out there.